George Soros has been making all sorts of moves to acquire radio stations all across the United States of America. Over the past few years, we've been covering his uh, effort to obtain uh, Latino radio stations, Hispanic radio stations, doing it dozens of them uh, in order to, you know, obviously take over the airwaves there. Uh, And additionally, now uh, this week, we get uh, FCC approval for a George Soros uh, led effort to take over some 200 plus radio stations all across the United States of America. And it's being done in a very expedited fashion by the FCC. And that's another way of saying it's usually not done this quickly. For more on what exactly happened and is happening, I want to bring in an FCC commissioner. Now, Brendan Carr joins us. Brendan, great to have you back with us, sir. Yeah, good to be with you. Thanks. Okay, so let's just let's just set up the basics here. Uh, this is about uh, acquiring uh, this company, Odyssey, and all the radio stations that it owns. Um, what can you tell us? How did this all go down? Well, look, earlier this year, this Soros-backed entity made a move to buy over 200 radio stations across more than 40 markets or cities across the country. And when they did that, they said that they were bringing in foreign investments, so money from companies based abroad or individuals abroad. The SEC has rules on the books. When you're bringing in foreign investment, you need to run through a special process that involves various national security reviews, foreign policy reviews. And what they did here was they asked to skip that process so they could more quickly get control and ownership of these stations. And then they say they'll come back down the road to run that process. But the commission itself has never voted to do this before. We've never allowed somebody to sort of put the cart before the horse and get control of the stations before you run that national security review. And the control of these stations, uh, is it immediate? Are we looking at, uh, at George Soros and company having control over the stations in the lead up to the election now? Yeah, this should be done effective immediately. The stations are coming out of bankruptcy, so there may be some minor filings you have to do in the bankruptcy court. But for all intents and purposes, it happens now. And you can start changing the programming at stations as soon as you have uh, ownership of them. And there's a lot of just regular you know, news and information on here. But there's a handful, at least, of stations that are currently have conservative um, commentators on it, from Sean Hannity to Mark Levin. And now this soros back group will have free range to change those or or not as they see fit. As you understand it, Brendan Carr, what are the foreign interests who are involved here? Well, that's what's so interesting is they haven't disclosed it at all. All they've said is they'll have excessive foreign ownership, meaning more than 25 percent. But they haven't said whether it's 90 percent or 100 percent or 26 percent. They've given the FCC no clue at all as to where those foreign interest holders are. What they've said is, trust us, we will wall them off whoever they are, uh, until the FCC does eventually complete this national security review. But right now we're signing off without any of that. In fact, you know, there's lots of deals that people have tried to get through the FCC over the last two or three years, and it's just been tough sledding. A lot of them have been turned aside. It's been a real difficult process. As you know, this administration is not very friendly to deals as a general matter right now. But yet this one just slipped on by um, without much process at all. So I, I think it's helpful for people to understand how the FCC is composed. Uh, the, there are five FCC commissioners, three of them appointed by Democrats, two by Republicans. You're one of those. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. The FCC is a five member body. Three are Democrats right now. Two are Republicans. So I've been on a, a handful of losing ends of partisan votes. And that's what this one was. This was uh, three Democrats in favor, two Republicans in opposition to this particular deal. Now, The good news, such as it is, is, again, this entity will have to go through this national security process eventually. Um, And so there'll be another bite at the apple at the FCC. But it would be very difficult to unwind this transaction once it's fully consummated here. The bad news is that review will likely not take place until after this election is already concluded. And and now with a little over 30 days until that election, uh, well, you know, we'll see what happens, whether or not it's actually concluded. But Election Day is just over 30 days away. Um, this decision is giving George Soros and, and whatever mysterious foreign interest is involved here a chance at uh, having a hand in uh, American politics immediately. Yeah, that's right. They won't even need to come back to the FCC for at least 30 days. And then that national security review usually takes anywhere from three to six months. So they will be fully in control of these stations, but there will be no national security review before uh, the election takes place. It's just madness. So one of the reasons, if I just want to emphasize this, one of the reasons you would expect the FCC to be involved in something like this, specifically with foreign ownership, is because I presume you're trying to stop adversaries 
from taking over American airwaves uh, because the, the you know the the broadcast airwaves are are regulated by the people of the United States by way of the FCC. You're trying to stop foreign meddling on those airwaves. Is that right? Yeah, it used to be that we basically had a de facto rule that you couldn't ever go above 25 percent due to those national security concerns that you talked about. Again, now we have a permissive structure where you can, but you're supposed to go through the review uh, first. And you're exactly right about that. In fact, in other cases right now, this particular FCC is clamping down more and more and requiring greater disclosures when it comes to foreign influence over U.S.-based broadcasters. But again, uh, this one seems to be an exception to that rule. So, and this is something you've never seen uh, in your career, Brendan Carr, the way it was fast-tracked for this George Soros group. Yeah, the, the commission itself has never voted to skip this particular process. Now, the other side pointed to a handful of staff-level decisions that they said was very similar. And even if they were similar staff-level decisions, um, those staff-level decisions aren't votes of the commission. They're not precedential for the commission. So this was a question of first impression for the five of us. Do we create a sort of special Soros shortcut, or do we make them run through the normal process? And again, the first time the commission itself voted and said, you know, this one can skip the process. So so does this, and I don't want to introduce um, any drama here that you don't want to bring upon yourself, but I, I, I wonder to what extent uh, you have looked into or, or are suspicious of uh, some of the motivations of your Democrat colleagues. I mean, what relationships do they have such that they would create a Soros shortcut? Well, I don't think there's anything sort of nefarious per se um, from that perspective. They're all, you know, really good people. But I I do think at the end of the day, it is rather curious. I mean, look, you had Governor Walls doing a apparently a fundraiser with Alexander Soros just last week and taking a picture. And then lo and behold, it's the same exact moment that the FCC is finalizing its decision here, whether something, you know, untoward happened or not. That's just terrible optics. And if you're Alexander Soros, you're going to be sitting on the board of one of these companies um, that got this special relief. I don't think you should be tweeting out photos like that right now. So so as you, that's a lot of radio stations. Some of these are in very big markets. You talk about some of the hosts who could be upended uh, by this, including our very own Mark Levin, for instance, or Dan Bongino, uh, these nationally syndicated guys. Um, when when you look at this, Brendan Carr, from your perspective, uh, how much of, of a threat is there, do you think, to conservative talk radio in the momentum here? Look, I think a lot of the, the conservative talk radio is just like wildly popular right now, not just on terrestrial radio, but on podcasts. And there's certainly a very, very big market for it. I think to your point, Dan Bongino himself has said, you know, no matter what happens with these terrestrial stations, his viewers will still find him. He'll still be popular. I think there's something to that. But look, I, I don't think that this purchase is being made um, for the purposes of making money. You know, I, I wish there was more investment going on right now into local broadcasting. We're seeing the opposite. Maybe the Soros Group sees something in the finances that no one else did, but it seems pretty clear to me that this investment is being made for purposes other than just making money. All right. Uh, Brendan Carr, always appreciate your time and and your insights into all these things. Commissioner on the FCC, Uh, sir, good to talk to you today. 